What's up, foodies? I'm Wei Lun. I'm Kurt. Welcome to the Gourmet Plate. We're at the city centre of Kuala Lumpur today and we are going to be doing our Japanese supermarket episode where we'll be visiting some Japanese supermarkets and buying their foods and ingredients and then for the next 24 hours, we are going to only eat meals that are created from these foods and ingredients from these supermarkets. Just like what we did in the Korean supermarket food haul episode. Link up above! We'll be visiting two supermarkets, one being Isetan Supermarket at KLCC and the other being the newly opened Don Don Donkey, which is located in this small lot 10. That is an equivalent to Don Quixote in Japan. So since we're already in this mall, let us hit the Don Don Donkey first. Let's go! Hey guys, so we entered Don Don Donkey on the second floor and as you enter, you can see that there are many non-food products on this floor. Toys, kitchen utensils, makeup, skincare, and even sports equipment. But today we are not here for any of this. Let's go to the floor below where they have their foods and grocery items. Here as we come down the stairs, you can actually see you are greeted by fruits, Japanese fruits. Look at those beautiful melon. And they even got watermelon here. And guys, this is what makes it interesting. Look at this. They actually show you a fruit season board to let you know which fruit is in season. And as we move on, we have got the vegetable section, some sweet potatoes, they even got steamed ones right here. But guys, today we're not going to focus on all the vegetables and all the sweet potato and stuff. We're here for the main stuff. Let's go. See this section right here? This is the beef section. And they have got Wagyu beef. Look at all the beautiful marbling! Guys, guys, look at this, look at this. This is super interesting. So we've got all these yakiniku beef cuts. These are wagyu and they actually let you sample like different cuts of wagyu from different parts of the cow. Definitely grabbing this. Guys, they even have a better beef here, which is the Omi beef and it's one of the top three beef in Japan alongside Kobe and Masusaka. See this? This is the Shiga Omi beef. Look at that marbling right there. My god, this is literally butter, isn't it? Looks just like butter with maybe some beef essence in it. Okay, I know the Omi beef is really, really expensive, but it's okay. Finance has approved for this. We have budget for this. Let's grab one. Let's choose a nice one. I want to pick one that is not that fatty. I think this will do pretty well. Let's grab this, shall we? With beef done, let's move on to buy some sashimi. I think we need sashimi to go with our meals, right? We've got a wide area of sashimi right here. There's so many types of fish. Okay, I'm basically looking for either chutoro or otoro, which is a fatty tuna, medium fatty tuna. And looking at the selection here, guys, guys, take a look at this, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, like this is the chutoro. You see this here? I think these are blemishes. And if I'm not wrong, it shouldn't be there. Um, I think we'll get the tuna from the other supermarket. I think they probably have nicer looking tuna. So not here, yeah. I see this. This is basically uni in salt water. And this particular I think is Kita Murasaki uni, which is a very high quality uni. And that uni I think is from this place called Hirono. And it's in Iwate, which is quite a well-known place that produces good quality uni. And the reason why they put it in salt water is to, I believe, preserve the natural flavors of the uni. So it's supposed to taste really, really natural in flavor. Very creamy and very clean. So let's try it out. Guys, they have got tamago as well. Wow, it's from Japan too. Let's grab this. We also got some pretty fresh looking sushi, but because we got sashimi already, so I think we'll skip on the sushi. We have tried it before, it's okay lah. So let's just do the sashimi. Mm. Nice clams for miso soup. Let's make some miso soup. Grab two packs of clam. Let's go. Scallops. Nice. Oh, pretty huge size. Guys, 
Look at the size of this, my palm. Wow. Since we're already grilling beef, I think we can get some scallops also, right? Let's grab this. Okay, they've got unagi as well, so I'm gonna grab one and definitely go for the Japanese one, the one that is from Japan. And this is from Japan. You can see from here is the product of Japan. In goes the unagi. King crab legs. Ooh. My god, guys. Definitely going way out of budget, but who managed? <laughs> okay, I think we got the main things out of the way. Uh, we've got some dried food that we need to buy, some rice, and let's grab some dessert first because we're at the dessert section right here. They've got a lot of mochi, daifukus, even pudding. Ooh, parfait, mochi parfaits. Wow, this is interesting. Is it from Japan? Oh, it is. It is the product of Japan. Let's grab one of this. Okay, let's grab one of those rolls. Some milk cream roll. Let's grab this. They've got quite a lot of desserts. They even got milk creeps and stuff, but we're just gonna get two because the other desserts that I want to get from the other supermarket. So let's move on to the rice. That's a lot of rice. <laughs> let's just grab two. Okay, this looks really interesting. So fun. Uh, I think it's a red rice. There are three packs, so let's try one of this. And I'm very intrigued by this as well. These are 16 grain rice. So let's try this. Oh, we need to get some wasabi. Let's go and grab some wasabi. Okay, over here, this is some wasabi paste. Hey guys, by the way, just for your information, this over here, it's not actually real wasabi, it's horseradish. Look at the ingredients. It shows that it's grated horseradish. I think it's kind of impossible for you to get like real wasabi from supermarkets because it needs to be freshly grated, right? So this will do. And this is very commonly seen in a lot of more casual Japanese dining restaurants. I was thinking maybe we could grab some of this like marinade for the beef while we grill it. And there are actually a lot of brands right here. But to be honest, I don't know any of those brands. The only brand that I know is Gyukaku because I've eaten there before. Gyukaku is a very well-known, uh, I would say casual yakiniku dining chain in Japan. So I think we should just grab the Gyukaku marinade. This is Kagome. And I've seen a lot of this while we were visiting Tokyo. So let's each pick one for our lunch later. I pick this. Okay. Okay, I'll be more uh, adventurous. Uh, I'll just pick the vegetable one. Okay, while well, we drinks, let's grab some tea as well. So let's grab one of this. So let's grab one of this. I'm hoping it's gonna be super fragrant. Okay, this final floor here is generally the snack floor, I believe. It's filled with lots of snacks. So about the snacks area, I'm sorry guys, we are not gonna feature any of the snacks here because there's just too much to slot into one episode. There's really a lot of snacks and I believe this can just be a standalone episode. Let us know if you want to watch us doing a Japanese snack episode. Leave a comment down below and we just very well might do it. Okay hey guys, so I think we're at the end of our Dong Dong Donkey food tour. And this is a lowdown to Dong Dong Donkey or Donkey Hotel in general. As you enter, it feels like a very happening and exciting supermarket because the things are just stacked up, they are so colourful and it's like a mini maze. It's like every section has its nook and cranny and you gotta look for all that stuff that you're looking for. Because if you have not tried or visited Donkey before, I think it's a very nice experience. Comparable to Japan? Yes, very much so. It's really close. It's really, really close. And I love how they put the information on the products that they are selling. That is so helpful. So yeah, we're gonna pay up now and we'll see you at the next zone market, which is Isita. See you there. Alright guys, quite is checking out and we forgot to bring our recycle bags, so we're gonna buy some now. And I really like this design. This is very very interesting. This is I guess uh, the Malaysian version of the recycle bag from Donkey. Right here. Look at this. Isn't this super cute? We're packed the stuff and we're leaving. But because we have purchased some beef, so the trip to Isidan Supermarket is going to be a short one. So let's quickly hit there because I don't want the beef to melt. <laughs> See you in a bit. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Ah, Isidan. 
The moment you enter, you immediately can tell. A lot more spacious, very prim and proper, just as a traditional supermarket should be. Anyway, let's quickly go and grab the stuff that we need. I'm always very intrigued with the frozen microwavable foods right here. So we're going to take a look and we're going to grab some of them. Wow, there's takoyaki. Hey. Wow, it's microwavable. Wow. Okay, let's grab one of these. Oh, they have shumai as well. Let's grab this one. This says it's number one for Ajinomoto. Nice, a shumai. Prawn, I think. And... What are these? Cheese chico. Oh! Interesting. Let's grab one of these as well. Nice. So we're gonna grab some taiyaki as well. Oh, interesting. This is, I think, oven or microwave, right? Makes me miss our taiyaki hunt in Tokyo so much. Let's grab this. Okay, moving on. Dessert section. Hmm. This is really interesting. Let's grab one of this. It's a tiramisu ice cream. Nice. Hmm, it's a wafer thingy and... Oh! Oh, guys, look at this. This is chestnut. Super interesting. Let's grab one of this. Okay, we're gonna pick another dessert. I think uh, there's a very interesting one right here. Take a look, guys. These are some sort of mochi dessert. And there are two flavors here. I think we'll grab a more unique looking flavor. Let's grab this one. And it's seasonal too. Okay, let's look back around for that remaining sashimi. And we've got instant noodles and there's a fair going on in Japan. So there's this thing that I want to buy for you guys to see. It's Taifuku basically. So let's go. Guys, see this? Look at this. Beautiful Otoro. Totally no blemishes. Let's grab this. This Ikura is so beautiful that I just had to get it. So we got an additional sashimi that we did not expect to have. I think these are things that you sort of sprinkle on your rice. This is a vegetable flavor. Let's grab one of this. Looks super interesting. So we're gonna buy miso paste for our soup. And this particular brand is a red miso. Uh, this brand and it's recommended by Foodie. So let's try this out. We have not tried this before. It looks really interesting. Hey guys, this is the one that I'm talking about. Look at this. There are five different types of noodle here. And I'm gonna recommend three of them. Actually, all of these five, four of them I've tried. So I'm going to recommend three which I really like. I think this is a very nice uh, sample pack. They are very small size. Okay, so we are done. And the last thing is Taifuku that I mentioned. We're going to grab that now. It's right in the middle at the food fair. So let's go. So this is the Taifuku counter. And we're going to get definitely one of these dangos. And all of these Taifukus, they are imported from Japan directly. So we're going to grab a few of them to try it out. Just here. Yes, Thank man. you. Okay, I think that's it. We've got our daifuku. So that ends a really quick uh, supermarket trip to Isetan. And we're going to check out now and we'll see you back home. Bye. Hey guys. We are back and we have sanitized ourselves and unpacked the stuff and everything. We've changed a fresh set of clothing. We are going to start off with meal number one, which happens to be our lunch. We'll be serving up some Japanese rice with some condiments, some sashimi, miso soup, and unagi. Give us a moment and we will serve it right up. Finally, we are done with our lunch. So we've got a lot of food here. It's generally a very rice base with side dishes and mm. condiments. Mm. Uh, we've got some miso soup that we've made using all the ingredients that we purchased. Aside from the tofu, tofu mm. is locally bought. So I think we start with the soup first. Uh. I want to try out the soup first. Yep. Mm. Mm. Salty mm. with some miso umami. It lacks a bit of depth, but yeah. I think for a uh, miso that you cook at home, I think it's okay. Yeah. Let us try the ingredient. I think try a bit of clam with the wakame and the tofu. Mm. Mm. Not bad, you can taste a bit of that so-called clam bitterness. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a very decent miso soup. 
If you cook it at home, it's okay. Mmm. Mm. Okay. We got two different rice here. Mine is, we call Ce Fan, right? It's a red rice. Mine is a 16 grain rice. Yeah. yeah. So let's try the rice at least first. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Mine is like glutinous rice. It's got a nice chill and saltiness. Not much of other flavors. And mm -hmm. they have got these red beans inside. I think that's a nice texture. Lah. You can taste a bit of the red bean flavor as well. Mm. It's a pretty decent rice. I mean, I'm surprised because it came out of a plastic pack and you just microwave it for, I think, what, 1 minute, 1 minute, 30 seconds? Mm. What about yours? For mine, is, uh, I could taste a different grain flavor and the texture is a bit sticky and also some grain texture like barley, bread rice. Okay, let's try the... I think we should do the sashimi first. Mm. What we got here is the fatty tuna, which is the otoro from Isetan. Mm. And we got some uni from Don Don Donki. Mm. Let's try the otoro first. Because this is really beautiful. Look at that marbling, it's crazy. Mm. It looks almost like a very marble piece of steak, honestly. So let's quickly try this out. Okay, a quick dip of shoyu and wasabi. Mm. 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 Oh. Right? Buttery. Mm. It's got that bite texture to the mm. flesh as well. Mm. It's not chewy, it just breaks apart mm. as you bite. The tuna is a little bit of its own taste. And the wasabi and the shoyu just elevates the flavor of the fairy tuna. This is very fresh quality, very good quality. Mm. Yep, very exciting. Let's move the uni first. Basically, this uni is a bit special. Mm. As you notice, it came in a salt water pack because they want to replicate the condition that uni was originally in, yeah, in the sea. So it's supposed to taste very clean and very fragrant. So let's quickly just try it out as it is like, without dipping into anything. Mm. Oh, mm. creamy. Salty. Mm. The salinity from the salt water. Mm. And, and there's this uni sweetness. sweetness along with its unique uni's natural flavor. Oh, this is actually good uni. I think this uni is placed in a very unique position. It's not as good as the uni that you get from the high-end sushi yas, but it's actually better than most of the Japanese restaurants that we have here. It's worth it. I think it's worth a try. Good value. The only issue I have with this uni is that because it's soaked in the salt water for so long, it's a bit limpy as you can see. It's not as firm as I'll have liked, and the water you see is just oozing water out. So that's the only issue I have with this one. We got some ikura as well, and this ikura is basically from Isetan. It is marinated in a bit of this shoyu zuke, which is soy sauce mix. Lah. So I'm gonna take a bit of this and put it onto my rice. Mmm. 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 Super bouncy. Very good quality ikura. Yeah. Not too salty. Mm. You can taste a bit of the soy sauce umami in it. Very, very good. This is good, it's very good. Totally recommended. It's on par with what you get from sushi restaurants. Now. Yeah. Mm. Let me have another piece of this. Then I try these sprinkle things on my rice. Yeah. This sprinkle thing over here, there's some veggie, the dry veggie, and the tiny fish. And some sesame, sesame seeds, seeds, right? Seeds, right? I think you just sprinkle this on your rice and then you eat it with the rice. It should give the rice some umami flavor. Mm, let's try one. Okay, let me grab. How is it? Mm. Some salty from the dry fish, the dry veggie, and the fragrance from the sesame flavor. And the mm. dried fish, it's got a nice umaminess mm. along with the saltiness. It's very decent. But I think if you just eat plain rice with this, it lacks a bit more of an assignment. Mm. But this is a good addition. If you're eating with other dishes, then you add some of this. Mm. It's actually nice eh. Now mm. we move to the unagi. Yeah, so this unagi is also from Japan. It's from Kumamoto Shongpen Sien. The one with the black bear, oh. so it's on the logo. Yeah, so I'm super excited to try because this looks really legit. And the moment we open the packaging, the smell, the, the fragrance the comes fragrance. out. Because it's really cooked, so we are worried that we might, if we heat it up, we might overcook it with the microwave. So we just dip it into hot water for a while, like a quick rinse, and we took it out. So let's hope it's still tasty and nice. It does look really, really soft and nice though. Mm. Okay, let's try this. Mm. Not bad. I would say very proper. Unagi. Mm. There's a bit of bite texture, but it does taste a little bit chewy in texture, mm. which is not what is expected of a good piece mm. of unagi. Mm. But it's bouncy. 
And I think the marinade is done relatively well. There's some sweetness, not overly sweet. You could still taste some of the unagi's flavor because they don't overkill it with sauce. Okay, a few negative points of this particular unagi. There are small little bones in there. I mean, you can still eat it with a bone, but it's not a nice feeling. And I think ultimately it's the texture, lah, the elasticity of the texture. We have actually tried another one, which is in Isetan, also from Japan. I think that one is better. Mm, that one is better. Guys, if you want to try like proper unagi, I think buy the ones from Japan. Yeah, because the ones from other countries, somehow it just doesn't taste like a unagi. Yeah. La. They, we are not sure whether it's the sauce or the fish itself, the eel itself, but yeah, get ones from Japan. I strongly recommend the Isetan one. So if you go to Isetan supermarket, you can get that one. I think that is better. And it's way smaller in size. It's about half the price hmm. of this particular one. Yeah. Let's try the damango. Sweet, eggy flavor. But it's a bit firmer than what we had in Japan. But it's, you still can taste a, a bit juicy. Very decent for vacuum packed tamago. Definitely cannot compare to the ones you get in Japan. Mm. And when I say the ones you get in Japan, what I mean is like the one you get from Skiji <laughs> Fish Market. Yeah. The street style tamago. It's not the high end sushi ya, sponge cake like tamago. Mm. So, first of all, it's very eggy. It's not the cake type. A decent quality, but way off compared to the fresh ones. Mm. But I think if you, you know, you're craving for tamago, it's quite decent. Mm. Oh! We forgot the drinks. Okay guys, we got the kagome, remember? Yeah, it's right here, we forgot about it. We're gonna each try one. So, Quite is trying the grape mix, right? And I'm trying the vegetable. So let's pop in the straw. I love how they gave us these bendy straws. Oh yeah! I mean really, it's the little things, right? We are very considerate. So let's try this out. Okay. Oh! This tastes like a... Wait, the grape wait, touch it. Is it? Yeah, how about yours? It tastes like minestrone soup or Bosch soup in a cooled version. Oh. I, could, I could taste the soundness of the tomato okay. and it's, it's basically a mix of vegetables, I can even tell. In a way, it also tasted a bit savory. Should okay, we try? Let's swap. <laughs> yeah, Vitagen. Wow! This right. thing is like Yeah, look. It's basically Western vegetable soup mm -hmm. in a pack. This is sweet with grape flavor mainly. I don't really taste that much of carrot. Carrot yeah. is probably for the texture mm. of the drink. Guys, I think you can next time just pour this to the pot yeah. and reheat. <laughs> and heat it up. And drink more vegetables. Then you got your, your vegetable soup already. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, that's about it. Mm. Um, oh, there's one thing we wanted to try. Crap, take out the seaweed. We actually bought this huge pack of seaweed. I think there are like 10 packs inside, right? Yeah. So we're gonna try one. Because this rice that I have is very much like glutinous rice. I was very interested if we wrap the seaweed around the rice, will it taste good or not? Because this actually has salty flavor. Mm. So let's try that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna eat first. Crap is gonna do hers. Mmm. The seaweed is good. Mm. <laughs> seaweed is very good. Oh. So umami. Mm. Oh, the seaweed flavor is so good. I mean, the rice is really there just as a side character. Mm. The seaweed is a key point here. Try it. Mm. Salty, mm. but yet so umami. And actually, I think it goes with the rice as well. I think it can go well with any rice. Mm. Is it weird if I say this is the best out of the entire <laughs> I think basically the entire meal. Seaweed is very, very recommended. Ikura is very, very good. Mm. I think the miso soup is alright. Um, tamago is alright. Tamago is alright, decent. Mm. Um, if you like sashimi, definitely recommended. Paddy tuna and uni is recommended. Unagi, just get the one from Isetan. So a lot of them are actually very decent, enjoyable. So that's it, we're gonna mop this up. Yeah, we're running a bit short on time because we just came here from a supermarket and we took a while to prepare this. And later on, it's gonna be tea time, so don't go away. We've got tea time dinner and supper. supper with desserts right mm. it's gonna be a really really packed episode see you in a bit really food day food day <laughs>
Fellow foodies, it's tea time now! Yep, that's how times on the magical land of YouTube works. In all honesty, we actually just had lunch 30 minutes ago as well. We washed the place and then it's tea time. We need to get tea time done with, if not, we will not have enough time to do the dinner segment. Yep, we are pressed for time. So what we brought for you guys are a few things. One of them are wagashis, which are Japanese sweets from Isetan Food Fair. They are the mochi and daifukus, as well as the dango. Whereas the other is from Don Don Donkey. It's a cream roll and some... Mochi puppet. Yup. Also, we got tea to cleanse palate. Yup. So I got the olong tea from Santori. And this uh, fruit tea from the master. Yup. So let's just start straight up. I think we try this one first lah. The mochi cup. Uh, the mochi cup. It's written here, strawberry puree and Hokkaido condensed milk. And look at the layers. It's beautiful. I think this is probably the milk and then probably some chocolate with strawberry puree. And this on top, they are mochi. Whoa, super excited. Okay, mm. I think Quet will start this first. Let's unpack it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow, look at those beautiful mochi balls. Oh, it really looks very well made for something that is in, again, a plastic container. Yeah. Very impressive. And the layers are very clear too. Oh, this is not chocolate. I think it's red bean red paste. Bean Okay, let's try this let's out. Try this. Ooh, wow, it's actually really soft. Mm. I can taste the strawberry syrup. Basically, it's sweet and the soft from the mochi. Maybe the sweetness from the strawberry and the condensed milk is overpowered than the red bean paste already. Oh. Very airy and fluffy yeah. foam. You can smell the strawberry fragrance. Mm. You can taste the red bean texture. Mm. But the flavor is a bit one-dimensional. It's yeah. sweet. But coming out from a plastic cup, is very decent. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the cream roll. But before that, I'm going to take a sweet from my Oolong tea. Mm. I definitely recommend this Oolong tea, by the way, guys. This is one of the really good packaged Oolong tea that I've had. It's got a really clear taste, like the clarity is there. Very nice, and it really cleanses your palate. So now I'm ready for cream the cream roll. roll. Whoa, look at that cream. But the skin fell off. La. <laughs> it's really, really fluffy though. Wow, this is some really fluffy sponge cake. My God, mm. again, wizardry from Japan. Let me move back the cloak. If not, the cream roll will get cold. <laughs> Okay, put the clothes back for the cream roll, Chan. Okay, nice. Okay. <laughs> okay, now it's well dressed. Let's try this out. Oh, it's really, really fluffy. It's really soft, but it's a bit too delicate. Like, it doesn't hold up very well, to be honest. This is broken. <laughs> mm. Very soft sponge cake. It's airy, but it's airy to the point that it feels very empty. Mm. The cream as well, it feels like it's so fluffed up that it lacks depth. I would say the cream is a bit heavy to me. Coming from Japan by Japan standards, definitely way off the better ones. Yeah. Basically, the lowdown is fluffy sponge cake, but pretty dead cream. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's do the dango first. I really love this because it looks very nicely colored. Look at the three colors. They are all different flavors. I think it's probably Sakura, the original. And this, I think, is Markwood. I'm not too sure. <laughs> anyway, let's try it out. Mmm. Chewy, soft. Yeah, it's got a Sakura fragrance. Mm. Not really sweet. I like the sweetness. Not too sweet. Mm. Doesn't kill you with sugar. I think yours is probably roughly the same, right? Exactly like what you say. Soft, mm. chew, and moderate sweet. Okay, let's try the Markwood. The Markwood fragrance is there. It's very mild. I would prefer it to be a little bit stronger. Mm. But same taste. Very decent dango. I think it's recommended. If you have not had dango before, you can try this. But it's only available during Japan Fair in Isetan Supermarket. Mm. I think the current one is ending. Mm. So you need to wait for it. It probably comes like every couple of months. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let us try the other drink that Quite has. Fruits tea. There's yeah. uh, five different fruits. Lemon, strawberry, grape, peach and apple. Oh. 
taste. I'm a bit worried looking at you. It's a artificial taste. <laughs> you can taste it's fruity, but mm -hmm. at the same time, the tea behind doesn't quite blend with the fruits. Mm -hmm. A bit artificial. And I think because also less sweet, mm. so you doesn't taste much of the flavor. Yeah, you taste like very mouth tea, very mouth fruity Fruit extract. <laughs> it's very disconnected. Yeah, that's how I'll put it. Not the best that we have had from this brand. Lah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now we're down to the mochi, but we have another thing that we wanted to do for you guys, mm. which is this. Taiyaki! <laughs> and it's frozen. This is super interesting. It's an instant version. And you can see it's really, really convenient. Just look at this. They even tell you like how many pieces for how long under what kind of power. So give us a moment while we prepare this. Ta-da! It's here. It's all heated up. We made three pieces. There are five pieces in a pack. Mm -hmm. And first things first, I can smell the dewy Dewey. fragrance yeah, of the taiyaki. I gotta say from an instant packaging, really beautifully molded fish. Yeah. But of course, it's not the crispy type because it's microwave. You can mm -hmm. see here it's soft type. It's the doughy soft type. But anyway, let's quickly just try this while it's still hot. I yeah. can't wait to eat this. Mm. Oh, surprisingly decent eh. from a freezer bag. My god. The first hit you is the red bean paste. It's moderate sweet and you can still taste the greeniness and the skin of the red bean inside. Yeah, so basically those with the red bean skin on is called subu an. Mm. It's in the paste. And this is a really decent red bean paste. Mm. And it's also a pretty generous amount. Mm. The skin. Of course it's soft, it's a soft type of um, taiyaki, it's not mm. the grilled type. But I would say it's moderately thick, it's not too thick. You could totally taste the skin texture along with the red bean paste texture mm. because the red bean is so generous. Skin got a nice doughiness. I really feel that it's so decent for an instant packaging. In the middle of the night, you want to eat taiyaki? taiyaki. Just pop it in the microwave. Yeah. Recommended. Mm. Simple snack. By the way, don't get me wrong guys, this is not the crazy good type, but for a convenient level food, really really simple and tasty. For the really good one in Tokyo, check out our link above, where we went and hunt for the best taiyaki. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is good. Okay, with taiyaki done, we are down to the last three products, which are the daifukus and mochis. Mm. So what we got here are three types of mochi, the sakura mochi, the shiomame daifuku, and this is the kusa mochi, which is makwood leaf mochi. Let us start with the sakura mochi, which mm. is glutinous rice together with pickled sakura leaf. Wow, there's red bean paste inside, guys. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Let's just grab half. Mmm, chewy, mm -hmm. slightly bouncy rice. Red bean paste is sweet. Mm, and smooth. The leaf has this very herbaceous, flowery fragrance to it. And some salty flavor. I think the mention is pickled sakura leaf, right? Mmm. Mm. This is recommended. Lah. It's very interesting in flavors. Yeah. Right, let's move on to this, the Shio Mame Daifuku, which is basically a salted daifuku with red bean paste filling. Oh, it's really, really soft. Wow, it's so soft, yeah. my god. By the way, guys, you see this? These are the black beans. They are stuck onto the skin of the daifuku. And inside, we have that beautiful red bean paste. Oh, this is so soft. Take a look, guys. Oh, see that red bean paste? This is the koshian, which is the smooth paste without any skin on. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm. Texture is very soft. Wow. You can taste the saltiness. And then the red bean paste, the sweetness, it sort of balances out the saltiness quite a bit. And the beans outside, they give a nice bite texture. Mm. The skin is moderately thick, I would say. The feeling is quite generous. Mmm. Mildly sweet and salty. Mmm. But I think in this sense, the red bean paste is too sweet. Where if you eat it together, you don't really taste the skin's flavor. Mm -hmm. The skin is done very well though. This is a very good daifu mm. compared to what we can get here. In Japan, it's very similar to what you get on the street side. La. This is a street side type of daifu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, again, if you want to check out the best daifu in Tokyo, link out above. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's try the final item on the menu, the Kusa Mochi. Oh, this one is also really, really soft. And inside is basically red bean paste, the subu one. 
Really, really nice. Let's mm. try this out. Mmm. Mmm. The leaf flavor and the fragrance from the mango leaf is very good. There's almost a little bit of this mao, I don't know, like mintiness, very slight mintiness. And the red bean paste inside, grainy with that skin, nice texture, mm -hmm. and the sweetness. I think it does lean towards a little bit over sweet for me, mm. but it pairs very well mm. with the skin outside the mango leaf. Mm. I think this is our favorite. Mm. Yeah, together with the taiyaki. I think these two are the best out of the entire lot. Mm. Mm. Alright guys, so that's it for our tea time. Um, we are really running short on time. Mm -hmm. It's almost dinner time now. We need to prepare dinner. So see you guys in, um, in a bit. <laughs>